Hey, if you want to create a really cool black and white photo with your urban landscape, take a look on screen at the photo that we will be fixing up today. We're going to be editing this amazing photo I took around uh, a few months ago. I think it was around fall and it had these beautiful, beautiful reflections on the window on downtown financial district of New York City. Our objectives for today are going to be add contrast using different tools and you're going to see exactly what I mean by that. We're going to be learning how our tones can be adjusted on Lightroom. Number two, we're going to be adding some dimension to this photo and number three, we're going to give it somewhat of an abstract feeling now that it's such a close up of these buildings and of these windows. Remember that you can download the same photo right below down on the description. And uh, I am Giselle Behrens for Photo TV NYC, live with tutorials helping you make better photos with the photos you already have. Here we go. This is my Lightroom workspace. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you are on your develop module right here. This tutorial is for photographers that are familiar or a little bit familiar with Lightroom. If you're not familiar with Lightroom, don't worry, you can still follow along, follow your own pace and just pause the video as you go. So when we are on our develop module, we want to open up. The first one is transform because as you can see, our lines are a little bit wacky and they are not completely straight. So we're going to go to our transform tab right here on the right hand side and on transform we're going to hit auto and that's going to help us correct the lines. If this doesn't help us 100% because I can see over here like this line is still a little bit out and this line is still not 100% there, we can always transform it with our manual adjustments right here and we're going to go to vertical and just add just add a little bit even a touch just like that gives it a much more straighter feel. You guys can play with it. All of these edits are completely subjective. You can learn, you can slide the sliders, and this is the best way to get to know not only Lightroom, but your photo, your style, and your editing vision as well. After we finish with transform, we're gonna go to our lens correction right here and make sure that this is checked. You can toggle it on and off and you can see how our lines are a little bit more curved when it's off and the enable lens correct profile correction is going to actually help us straighten out all of these lines so they're nice and as less distorted as possible. You also want to check the remove chromatic aberration. You can always toggle them on and off and decide if you want to do it, but this is how we're going to be fixing this photo with urban landscapes because we have so many straight lines. Usually we have many straight lines if we are taking photos of buildings. So I like to keep mine as straight as we can. After we finish these general adjustments, we're going to go to basic and we're going to go to our black and white tab right here. So just check on that. And that's going to automatically swap it out to black and white. And as you can see, this photo is very gray. It doesn't really have much contrast. So we're going to be today learning how to adjust our tones and our curve just to understand what the mid tones are, what the shadows are and what the higher tones are. We're not going to be touching our contrast slider, even though it's the easiest. If I do turn it on, there you go. I want to show you guys how to read tones in an image and then you can translate your vision through using these tools in Lightroom with your photo. So we're going to go down and in exposure, we're going to just add a little bit of exposure. We want to make sure that, that there's enough information here to start seeing everything that is in the reflections. Now, as we turned up our exposure, all of the information that we have on our sky completely got lost, but we are t using a raw file. So we can go to highlights and for raw versus JPEG, check out a video that I'm going to tag right there because 
you're going to be able to understand the differences on the limits on how much you can edit and adjust a photo if it's a JPEG versus if it's raw. So I'm just going to lower my highlights and I think around, around 77 looks good because that's when my clouds really start coming out again. So I want to have this information. I don't want it to be completely white. Now the first tool we're going to be using to add some contrast is going to be our blacks and blacks are just going to adjust anything that is already black in the image. So I'm going to push my slider all the way to my left and see what type of adjustment happens if I do push that slider to the left. And now I'm going to go back to zero and slowly diminish the blacks. And I'm going to leave it at around minus 32 because this gives me some density to start working with. Now we're going to go to presence and in dehaze clarity and texture, we're really going to push these three sliders because these are going to be the main ones that are going to help us get the blacks black, get some sharpness and some dimension. But afterwards, we're also going to be complementing with the tone curve. So let's take a, take a look over here at the presence, starting with the dehaze working our way up because dehaze is the most sensitive of all of them. I'm just going to push it to the right, which adds dehaze, and this starts automatically adding some contrast on the midtones. It starts darkening up the, the tones that are already dark and brightening up the ones that are just a little bit bright. Now clarity, I'm going to push that as well to my, to my right. And clarity is going to continue giving us a punch, especially in the midtones, which gives us a sensation of sharpness. And because we have so many windows and buildings on this photo, clarity and texture are especially going to help us with the sharpness of the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and reset clarity when I'm at 100% zoom so you guys can see the difference. Take a look at the screen. You can see how the edges start really becoming sharper. And I'm going to leave my clarity at 53 and I'm going to start adding texture. And texture further refines my lines and I'm going to leave it at around 51. So you guys can see there how the texture starts coming out with these three tools and we're not even using any contrast nor any sharpness tools like directly those tools on Lightroom. So this is giving you full control over the edits and the adjustments that you do as a photographer and as an editor to tell the story that we're trying to tell with the story. Now we're going to go down to tone curves, as I mentioned before, and tone curves we're really going to push. We're really going to push this to get the information from our dark areas out again, and we're going to push our blacks lower, and also we're going to see if there's any more information on the highlights that we're able to recover. So starting from, from the highlights, I'm going to push my highlights to my left, and my highlights, I'm going to leave them at around 73. You can see on this area of the photo how my clouds start becoming more dense and they start getting more shape only by diminishing the highlights. And it doesn't affect the quality of the image because we're working with raw. So again, you should definitely see that video if you haven't seen it. It's so important that if you do have the capability of working with raw to go ahead and do it because we have more flexibility when we edit. So now we're going to go actually to our darks and in our darks, we're going to open up our darks. Yes, we're going to open our darks to get information out of the shadows. So I'm going to start pushing my darks to my right hand side and this is going to flatten my image, but I'm going to really start seeing what type of information is here in, in my reflections and in my shadows. You can see over here, this starts coming out. And in this photo, we really want to show all of the sharpness, the windows, the buildings, the patterns, the textures, everything that's going on, because it's such a, it's such a, a grungy photo in the sense that all of the, the, all of the windows can give us sharpness and add 3D effect to the photo. 
So because we did augment our blacks, our, uh, sorry, our shadows, our blacks went gray. So with the shadows, we are going to push them to our left and that's going to make our shadows go black. So that's going to give us the contrast in the photo by using the tone curve. And our lights, we're actually going to augment as well just to give it that balance between light and shadows. We don't want to augment it too much because then we start losing some details on our highlights, but of course we can go a little bit lower on our highlights and just play around. There's no right, there's no wrong. You guys can play and feel it out, feel how the story of your photo is starting to, to show up on your image. So I wanna see what happens if I push it a little bit more. I'm gonna leave it at around 35. So I'm gonna close up my tone curve and as I did open up my lights, this area started becoming a little bit too bright. So if I take a look at my photo as two parts, as the top and as the bottom, the bottom area is a little bit heavier and the top area has a little bit more light. So we're gonna correct that correct that with our M. Just go ahead and press the M and this is gonna take us directly to our masks. That's our hotkey. And on our mask, you always wanna double click the word effect to make sure that all of your sliders are zeroed down. And we're going to add a mask from the top to the bottom up to around the middle and leave it open nice and fluffy in the center because we want a gradient in this adjustment. We don't want it to be a harsh and finish very harshly. We want it to be very gradual. So these lines, I want them to be very, very open. Now, when we're there, we're going to go to highlights and just push the highlights. Don't be afraid of pushing them all the way to the left. We're gonna do minus 100 on highlights. And we're even going to add just a little bit less exposure, just to give it that slight vignetting effect. 0.21, this subtle adjustment is gonna help a lot. And now, take a look at the screen. In your screen, you have the final image. We can check out the before and the after. And this is how we did this photo with contrast with not even using the tools of contrast over here. And I'll just put my rectangle so you guys can see it, it's zeroed down. So this exercise really helps us understand how, how we can push our tones, how, how we can understand what's going on on the darkness, what's going on in the mid-tones, in the highlights, in the shadows, and how Lightroom adjustments really affect the image when we do adjust the sliders. So what we learned are one, add contrast using our tones. Number two, we maintained image on our highlights and that was on our clouds. So it's really important that if you do want to keep some information on your white areas, that the highlight tool is there for you to use. And number three, texture and sharpness equals dimension. By adding some texture with dehaze, clarity, and texture, we managed to add some dimension to this photo. So remember that if you did learn something, you can go ahead and press that subscribe button because we are here every day at noon helping you make amazing photos. So if you are interested in learning how to make really incredible photos, stay tuned and follow us Every day at noon, I am Giselle Behrens for Photo TV NYC. Thanks for joining. Leave your comments down below and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.